from Power BI or from Power Query, when you want to join two uh, or more tables together from a specific data source, we have this option that we can merge tables together. Uh, but there's an easier option for you as well, especially when you get data from relational database systems such as SQL Server, Oracle, Snowflake, uh, which Power Query relies on underlying relationship between tables, and then you can expand tables based on that. I'm Reza Rad, and I'm going to show you in this video how this is going to work. Before showing the demo to you, I have to mention that this method only works when your data comes from a relational database system, um, such as SQL Server, database systems that have the concept of relationships. Uh, most of the um, transactional database systems that are used as a database systems um, in Operating systems works like that. For example, um, SQL Server, Oracle, DB2, Snowflake, but for example, this does not work with Microsoft Excel because Excel doesn't have the concept of relationship between tables. Now, um, for those uh, without the relationship between tables, you have to use the normal method of creating uh, the merge, which I have explained that in another video and what are different types of merge, I have explained that as well. But in this video, I'm going to explain without doing the merge using Power Query relationship columns to work through this. So this approach works really simple. I'm going to show you in this uh, Power BI file. So here you see that I have the Power BI file that I want to connect to a specific data source. Let's say I'll go and choose uh, this SQL data source. Now, when you connect to a SQL data source, and I'm going to cancel that, and I show that from the beginning to you because there was a screen before this that I skipped when I used an existing connection. So when I say, for example, go and connect to a SQL server, and here normally you have your database URL, whatever database server is, this might be um, your local on-prem database server uh, that you have an IP to connect or name to connect or it might be something like a, um, like Azure database as well and it also works with uh, other database systems as well. I connect to SQL Server but you can connect uh, to something else such as Snowflake or anything like that as well um, and you push the, put the database name here. But the most important part I want to show you here for this example is this part, which says include relationship columns. I'm enabling the zooming tool so that I can show you this better. Include relationship columns specifically is designed for this kind of process. When you connect to a database system, relational database system, what Power Query does, it understand those relationships and bring those as extra columns within your tables. Now, for this example, I'm not going to use SQL Server, I'm using OData, which has similar structure, uh, but you'll see what I mean by using that. Um, it has a similar uh, concept to a database system. So here you see I have connected to this OData source. You can assume this is a, um, this is a relational database scenario as well. And I can go and choose tables such as, for example, orders, such as product, um, and other things as well, such as, for example, customer, employee, right? Uh, and I can get this information. Now, customers and employees, they are also related to other tables underneath. For example, customer has relationships with something such as um, customer demographics or employee has some kind of relationships with another table such as um, territories and things like that but I don't want to go into that um, kind of like creating relationships and merge operation I will just select these tables customer employee orders when I'll go to transform data uh, assuming that I have checked that include relationship columns, what I will see is that the table itself appears here. So here you can see the employee table um, and all the columns related to the employee table. But when I go further to the right, I will also see some extra columns, which are these columns. Now these columns that you can see here, these are what I mean by relationship columns. These are not 
normal columns in your uh, database table. Normal columns are like this, they have a value. Uh, for photo is different because it's a photo stored in that location but everything else has a value like a home phone country notes anything like that apart from these columns at the end these few columns they are not normal columns when you look at their data type they are like a table in each of these columns uh, one thing about these columns is that if I don't do anything about these columns if I just say close and apply these columns will not be loaded into Power BI and the reason for that is that Power BI do, um, does not have any understanding of a table data type or record or list. Uh, these are complex data structures that only Power Query understands it. So if I load this into Power BI, everything will be loaded from the employee table except these four columns at the end. So then what is the use of these columns? Well, the use of these columns is that, assume this scenario, let's say I wanted to get the employee table uh, in my star schema, employee table needs to be also connected to territory table because each employee belongs to a specific territory and each territory is part of a region. So what I need to do in those scenarios is I need to go and bring the employee table and then I'll need to go and I'll just add the two other tables as well. I need to also go and bring, um, for example, the territory table and also the regions table because I want to merge these three together. Uh, so um, region ID is used inside territory table and territory ID is used inside employee table. So when I have these three tables together, then I can create merge process between these three which means that I use a link field or column whatever it is between employee and territory then between territory and region and I create that merge and create the flattened table because this is my dimension table and it works perfectly fine but this requires you to understand what is the existing relationship underlying the relationship in the database whereas what I'm about to tell you this relationship column doesn't really need these so I'm going to remove these two extra tables uh, because I don't need them I have them already as part of this uh, employee table so I'll go to the employee table I'll go to the last column here which is territory now if I click on a blank area in the territory table you can see which territories this employee belongs to so this employee apparently belongs to two different territories or this one belongs to more than that uh, so I can go and find those territories and um, expand this table into that uh, the way that we expand it is by just clicking on this expand button when you expand into a um, complex structure then you'll see all the underlying columns these are not columns of the employee table these are columns of the territory table and I'll leave this checkbox on this means that um, um, all of these columns would have a territories at the beginning of it so then when it expands it looks like this so then you see that I have a whole bunch of new columns territory.id territory description territory region id all of those um, and this is giving me all the territories that this has. You see that the number of records also increased and that is obviously because we are joining two tables together. We might have multiple instances of the same record in the other table, um, which I have explained about different types of merge also previously. You can go and check it out. And uh, then the last step is I want to also expand it into region. You see region is not a table here, it's like a record. When you have one value only for that particular record in the other table, it appears as a record. When I click on it, you see the record information. So this has the region ID and region description and territories, which is part of that column already we used. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand into this as well and I'll leave that original column name as a prefix. This time I have also the region details. So I have the region ID, region description. Uh, territories is just that expand feature that we will continue keep going on. So then I go and remove extra columns that I need. For example, I don't need this. I don't need employees. I just need region description. 
I do have already region ID, so I'll just keep one of these. Uh, I have also territory description and territory ID. So these four columns are now added into my employees table. My employees table is a flattened employee table that I can then use it to, to uh, create a relationship with the orders table. And that part is what I do inside Power BI when I create my star schema. Orders table would be my uh, fact table. Employees would be dimension table. And the reason that I um, flattened the, the employee table is that I did not want to have dimension to dimension relationship, which is not a good practice. It creates like a snowflake structure with the dimension tables will um, flatten them but with fact tables, we'll keep those relationships inside Power BI, we'll bring it inside Power BI. Uh, you could achieve the same if you had three tables of employee, territory, and region separately, and then merge them in Power Query, that would have been also possible. Performance-wise, no difference, because this behind the scene also do that merge operation. Um, but it is simpler. To use it this way. Now, if you are quite familiar with the database structure, you might just bring the table separately and create merge because one of the benefits of bringing them separately is that you might also want to keep that table as a reference table, like that territory table as a reference table separately anyway. Um, so here is the difference. No performance difference actually. It helps you to create that flattened structure easier without really knowing what is the column that creates the relationship underneath in the database. I hope this video helped to understand how Power BI and Power Query understand the relationship in a relational database and you can use it to expand uh, and build your flattened dimensions faster and easier. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe into our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos about Power BI, Power Query, uh, Microsoft Fabric. Um, until the next video, bye.